Christianity so so much, this religion so much, because God, Jesus, gives us purpose in this life. All right? Whatever situation we're going through, no matter what situation we're going through, may, may it be like hard situation in the marriage, may it be like, you know, from any age, if like you're older in the marriage, maybe you're, you lost your job, maybe you're in high school, whatever the situation is, God is here, God is there in your life, if you believe in him, to help you. That's the purpose of believing in Jesus. That's the purpose of, of finding yourself in this faith. You know, that's what I've been contemplating, actually, seriously, for the past years, you know, because, you know, uh, if you go through different trials, through different tribulations, when you go and the fire is <laughs> sometimes not inside of you, but when you go through fire, you understand the, that God really cares about you. The Bible says that God, excuse me, <coughs> God cares about you more than you care about yourself. Amen. Amen? He cares more, right? And in God, we can find that connection because we know that God, he went through hard stuff. Right? He went through extremely hard stuff. Jesus went through, the, you know, he went through the cross, right? He was beaten, right? You know, we can find so much connection with God. It's, you know, it, we, we have to, like, our heart has to overflow with thankfulness. How much connection we can find with, with God. How many times have you heard that there's a God? who went through these hard situations and you can connect with, with him. How many, like, you know, that story with, where uh, one of his friends, Jesus' friends, Lazarus, he passes away, right? And he comes, right? And what does Jesus do? He cries, right? How many times have you heard that God cries, right? So we have a caring God. We have a God who cares about his people if you believe in him. I'm just going to... You know, <laughs> go in it really hard. If, if if I make you a little bit today uncomfortable or a, a little bit awkward and the and the air was gonna be really thin, like so thin you can cut it with a knife, I have you know I have done the job that I want to do. <laughs> you know? If you feel uncomfortable, hallelujah. All right? Hallelujah. Because you know, I, I believe that when you come to God, all right, the Bible says you're a, a new creation, right? God has called us. For us to be reconciled to him, all right? There's hundreds, there's millions of people out there that they don't know God. We are supposed to be the what? The salt and the light. And the light. Amen, Vinny. The salt and the light. We are supposed to project God, right? All right? Now, you know how we project in God? We come into this place and we get to know him a lot more. The Bible says faith comes from what? From hearing, here comes from the word of God, right? You know, I want you to share this story. Before I, I dig into the story, and, you know, um, there's so many lessons. I think, you know, Bible, I think Bible is one of the most critical, one of the most important, one of the most deepest, uh, radical books you can ever read, all right? If you, I met somebody uh, a couple of months ago, and we were talking about God and different things, you know, and everything else in the gym. I met him, and he was like, yeah, man. I read the Bible. I read the Bible seven times already. I don't need to listen to it. I don't need to come to church. And I'm, I'm looking at him, and I'm like, not, you know, judging him or anything else. You cannot say you have read the Bible, and you don't need to come to church, all right? Because the Bible is an ongoing reading book. You read the Bible every day, right? The Bible says that man shall not what? Shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the word of God, right? So if you don't live by the Word of God, if you don't read the, the Word of God, your inner person is going to become hungry, 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 and then he's going to pass away, right? So, you know, you can't say that, oh, I read that verse, I read that story, I read that Bible, I read, and that's it, I have done with Christianity, I'm going to go forward. No, the Bible feeds us, the Bible encourages us, the Bible gives us life. The Bible shows us about our God who can reveal himself and really heal us. For whatever situations we're going through. Now I'm asking you, what situations are you going through right now? Because everybody is going through something. All right? The biggest, the biggest game, the biggest game in the church is acting more than you actually are in real life. You understand? Yeah. Right? In my days, we used to say, let's keep it real. All right? I don't know how they say it right now on the street, but let's keep it real, all right? You can say, you know, a lot, a lot of people are seeing church, oh, ah, ah, 
hallelujah, everything is okay, you know, everything is good, but what's going on inside of their lives, what's going on in their marriages, in their jobs, in their walk with God, you know, what is actually going on, you know, are you struggling, are you crying every night, like, what are you doing, you know, when you come to church, are you seeking help, or are you just come, coming in, everything is fine, I'm good, you're putting on that face, for what? Everybody failed. You know? So I think that's one of the most important things when we come to church, when we come to God, is to be honest. Is to be honest, right? So with the story, guys, I just want, for us, I want myself, you know? The more I get to know God, the more I want to know Him even more. The more um, He reveals Himself to me, I'm like, man, I want you even more in my life, you know? I want your love, I want your grace even more, you know? I can walk on, on the street, I can walk on the street like, and like God's presence just comes down and I'm like, man, I'm like, am I worthy? Am I like, you know, like, so, thank you so much for your grace, thank you so much for your love, thank you for taking me, thank you for re your revealing your fatherhood in my life, all right? You know, for all of you who don't know, like, you know, for a couple of people who haven't met me, you know, like I came to, to church, different people, different come. Different people come to God because of different reasons. You know, maybe somebody lost their way. Maybe somebody has an addiction, gambling, you know, uh, whatever, drugs. Maybe somebody wants to get a visa. Maybe somebody wants to get this, somebody that. You know, we have a lot of these people, you know. Somebody, somebody is, you know, looking for something. One of the reasons I came to church because of my current wife. You know, I found her cute. You know, <laughs> and then she was a beautiful body and everything else. And then after a couple of months, it was... God's love, that fatherly love, you know, that I, I've, I've longed for all of my life. I've needed that all of my life, you know. All of my life, I longed for that father, that smell of, of, of having a father, you know. <laughs> you know, going to a park, seeing a father with their kid. And I'm like, man, I want that. I never had that. And coming to church, I'm like, wow, God, you exist. God, you love me. Not because I've done something. Not because I've earned something. But because you are my father and, and you showed it to me. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. So as soon as I find out, I get married. I, I, leave, <laughs> you know? I leave my whole life. And at age 20, I decided to go after God. Forget about, you know, Zadik, Andrew, everybody. I just didn't know. The youth pastor knows. Like, I've been, I'm going to say for like 20 years, you know, since freshman, since freshman years, right? Oh, what happened? You know, one of, the, one of the first time, the first time I got drunk was with you. <laughs> it was with you. And Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> was with you and uh, what, what's her name? Vika. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's some nasty vodka, Gordon vodka, Gordon vodka. The cheap stuff. The cheap stuff. <laughs> yeah. Salad or something like this. Uh, <laughs> salad was on the sidewalk afterwards. <laughs> was the first time I got drunk was at that place, but um, it was crazy. And you know, when God calls us, I thank God that He revealed Himself. You know, and there's been different trials, different tribulations, different uh, things that happened since then. But um, I'm thankful I'm in this place. I'm thankful I'm before you, and I can, you know, we can we can get to know God a lot better. You know, because Instead of people who are just coming in, people as just being consumers, we have to be merchants. You know the difference? Like when you come to God, a lot of people after a certain time, after three or four or five years, if you've been with God for a long time, you just come in, sit down, and go like, feed me, feed me. Like, I don't know if you remember that movie, Feed Me Seymour, what was that? I forgot that movie, but anyway. <laughs> um, feed me and feed me and feed me. And you like, you constantly want to be fed. But instead of a merchant, merchant is somebody who comes in, and he does things. He goes out. He, you know, he he um, he gets reconciled with God. He understands that he's a sinner himself. And he needs to bring other people through God as well. You know. So my 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 um, intention, my 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 deepest wish for every one of us is what we began started. You know that last song, and I asked you. You know, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to give glory to God, right? And we must understand that we need to be saved. <laughs> the first part, like. Before going through the story, one of the first things we need to be saved. All right, the Bible says that unless a man is what is born again, Jesus said that, right? 
one, one time in the evening, this rabbi comes, he goes, okay, so what must I do to be saved? Jews go, like, listen, you need to be born again, right? So it doesn't matter how many years you've been in church. It doesn't matter if you were born in a Christian family, right? Like Timothy, like David, like, you know, my, my daughter, actually, she, she was born. You know, it doesn't matter. My faith will not save my daughter. Uh, Timothy's uh, father, who's a deacon in the church, he will not save him. He must realize himself he's a sinner and come to God, you know, like each of us, you know. And you can say, no, oh, man, I'm not a sinner. I'm not, you know, I'm a good person, you know, and, and all of this stuff. And I think the older you get, I don't know how younger people, but the older you get, the more realize how, <laughs> as a human being, you're a, you're a, fallen, you're a fallen person. You know, and uh, <laughs> there's so much uh, mm-hmm. imperfection in us, and there's so much uh, uh, wickedness, and there's so much um, craziness. Like like Paul was saying in Romans seven, right? Who can who can save me from, from this wrecked body? You know, like I don't do the things I want to, right? Who will save me? And who will save us? Jesus, right? So um, to give you a brief introduction, I guess you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay within the time frame because I don't I, you know I have uh, I know that there's a concentration for young people is a bit you know like the vine the, the vine concentration we have the, the the generation of the vine two minutes how high is it not even two minutes how long how long is the vine like what is, ten seconds five seconds how long are our vines. You know, like an say application, right? The yeah, yeah. Like small some videos. Make videos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 15, 15, 15 seconds, seconds. right? Fine. I'll be pushing for that. This is a long sermon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long sermon. Yeah, 15 seconds, right? You know? Instagram 15. Yeah. Um, let us turn to uh, the first book of Samuel. We can get into the word. Actually, I have everything written down. So the first book of Samuel, right? The first, uh, third chapter, first verse. What is, what is the book of Samuel? First book of Samuel. First chapter. Third chapter. And first verse. Yeah. First Samuel, third chapter. Does it begin with the boy Samuel? Mm-hmm. Okay. So just to give you a brief um, introduction uh, of the story and of the uh, what we're gonna read, um, it's um, it's a person like like us, and you can lose you, you know, and you can find you yourself identifying, connecting with this person, and. Uh, um, you know, yesterday at the church, at the main church, pastor was, was preaching that we must um, uh, have a, a different examples of how to live a, a Christian life, right? And Samuel is one of those people that we, we um, he is the, uh, even the Bible mentions that uh, he he's considered maybe one of the greatest uh, prophets and judges, actually, you know? And uh, due to the fact that um, what, what he did in his life, if you study, right? So, uh, so the Samuel, I especially love Samuel because he has so many different le- lessons, especially in this story. And before we open up, I don't think I, I prayed before when I came here, when I came up. No. So I just want to pray right now for God because when we pray, uh, when we read the Bible, we're asking God to open up, right? To o- tell us something deep inside of our hearts, right? And, um... Um, you know, let us be open to his word, right? God, thank you so much for tonight again. Hallelujah, God. Thank you so much for this place, God. Thank you so much for these people, God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much that you care for us. Thank you so much for your guidance. Thank you for your protection, God. Thank you for your perfect will. Thank you that inside of you, God, inside your will, we can go on. We can live. We can live, God, in this life. Thank you so much for choosing us. Thank you. Thank you for taking us out of this wicked world, and and bringing us into your kingdom, God. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We just ask you in this evening, God, whatever that you have started, let let it continue, God, and let the word of God 
penetrate, penetrate our hearts, God. Penetrate our souls, God. I don't want to. I don't want to just speak uh, empty words that fly into the air, God. I want to be used by you, God. In Jesus' name, God. Thank you so much, God, for your greatness, God. Reveal your your name, God. Reveal yourself as a great God. Hallelujah. So we can give you glory, God. Not a tiny God, not a God, but you are the God who created the heavens and the earth, God, that the scripture speaks about, God. And thank you so much for your word, God. Thank you so much for your examples, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for your presence, God. Thank you that your word says that you don't need a lot of people. You need thousands and thousands. You just need two or three people who are dedicated, who are passionate for you, who are hungry for you, and you are among them, God. And we thank you so much for, for that. Thank you so much for your presence, God. Hallelujah, God. Reveal yourself through the word, God. We want to be open, God, to your word, God. We want to be open to, to uh, rebuke, to, to penetration, God, of your word inside of our hearts, God. Hallelujah. So we, we may change, God, and our, our years, God, may not be wasted, God, in regrets, God. But from the younger age, God, we are ready to step on the right road. Hallelujah, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You guys have a huge advantage. Like, for you, this is youth, right? There's a church. We have church, a lot of people. But for young people, we have such a huge advantage. I put on consider myself a young person. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about my forehead and everything. Um, as a young person, we have this great advantage because we, we still haven't committed a lot of mistakes. We still haven't committed a lot of regrets. If you ask an older person, how many regrets do you have? Get ready for a long answer. Get, get ready to, you know, to stay overnight, you know, and just listen and like, fall asleep, you know. You really have to find somebody stranger because, you, you know, don't speak to strangers. Ask your mother, ask your father, you know, you know ask your older brother. You know, the older you get, the more kind of things like, I wish I could have done better, I wish I could have done better. And then you see an older person, he's like kind of like gloomy, kind of like sad, he's kind of, because, you know, his dreams failed, his, uh, you know, his... Uh, you know, his decisions failed and everything else. But as a young person, you know, as a young person, and not even as a young person also, even when you're older, it doesn't matter what age you are. Right now I'm thinking, even if you're, you know, 15, 12, 13, but at an older age too, 40, 50, 80 years, we had a marriage a month ago. <laughs> How old were they? They were like pretty old, no? Yeah, like in the late 60s. The late 60s, yeah, they found each other, they get married. Hook up in church. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Maybe kids, you never know. <laughs> Abraham brought all the <laughs> huh? no. So, I mean, God, the Bible says, God, God renews our youth too. But at the younger age, we have this great advantage, you know. We can set our lives, uh, our foundations upon God. That's the biggest thing. That's the huge thing, you know. And it doesn't matter, and listen, just, again, not to, not, not, not to give the bad news, because the Bible says it's the good news, right? The Bible says it's the gospel, right? But, you know, being a believer, being a be believer, being a Christian uh, will not um, seclude you, will, will not, uh, you won't be, you won't be, uh, how can I put this? The same things that happen, the same bad things, the same trials the same sorrows, the same, um, um, like, losing of a job, losing a loved one, um, divorce, you know, all these crazy situations that happen to a non-believer also happens to a believer, right? You know? So coming to, to God, do not expect, like, oh, rainbow, unicorn, you know, and stuff, you know? There are situations, people that, you know, believers going through cancer, you know, believers going through, uh, you know, their, their kid being, you know, dead at, you know, at a young age and stuff. You know, there's these situations. But what makes a difference, a huge difference between a believer, between a Christian and a non-Christian is a Christian has a purpose. A Christian has a meaning. You can put, you can put, a, you can put a purpose in, in a person when he's dying of cancer at the hospital. And you can tell them, listen, it's not meaningless. You know, God is maybe preparing you for eternal glory, right? And you're going through these hardships for you to understand better God, you know? Because the Bible says through tri tribulation, through trials, we become more like who? Like Jesus, right? That's what the Bible teaches, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we as young people, you know, when we come here, 
We need to understand the word of God. We need to give glory to God, you know? And if it's like, you know, I, I'm judgmental to myself, you know? If I'm in the church for a long time, I think, you know, I need to be doing a lot more what I'm doing now, all right? Because God did not crucify himself, right? He did not go on the, you know, Jesus did not go because he said, nobody takes life from me. I go, right? Jesus did not go on the cross for you to come here just to sit and not do anything, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm being a mean preacher but some, sometimes, but, you know, it's with good intentions, you know? We have this, we're coming in on Fridays, you know? Our God is a big God, right? Our God is a glorious God, right? Our God creates the heavens and the earth, right? He is bigger than this office, than this building, than the street, than the city, than this uh, uh, nation, right? So if we have a, such a huge God, why are we worshiping through a, a laptop? That's my question, all right? You know, I, you know I'm you sitting, I'm like, we have a, such an enormous, loving God, and not with disrespect to this youth, you know, because I feel I'm a guest here, but, you know, he's such a great God. Why aren't we picking up uh, a guitar or drums or anything else? You know, are we handicapped? That would change this situation. I would, I would get it, you know, like, yeah. I would get it. Jesus. If that would change something, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we come to God again. We come to God to learn, all right, and to be in the ministry, all right. And it doesn't matter. Listen, some of you, and I know some of your stories too, a couple. Some of you have been trying and going back and forth, back and forth, up and down, up and down, like it's a roller coaster, you know. One time, I believe God can take you really hard, and you gotta go forward. And let's say there's a balance. It's not up and down anymore. It's just a straight line towards Him. It's a slow line. It's not like huh, but it's a slow <laughs> line. It's a quiet line. You know what I'm saying? All right. So with this story, it's a preparation. All right. It's a preparation for those people who actually wants to get to know God, who wants to really um, go into ministry, really give Him glory, because God deserves all the glory. Right? Hallelujah. So 1 Samuel, third chapter, first verse. All right? And I'm going to read a little rant a bit <laughs> and then read some more. <laughs> Ranting, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then finish up. Um, the boy, uh, you have the first verse. The boy name. The boy Samuel, right? Right. right. Okay. So the boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. So it was a small boy, right? His name is Samuel. He ministered before under the under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Alright? So it speaks about a little boy who um, uh, who is ministering under this prophet. Eli was a prophet, right? And Samuel, he's he's learning, right? And it says that in those days the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Like in that day, in this day, there's, you know, the word of the Lord is very rare. You know, when you go out on the street, you don't have in 7-Eleven somebody, thus says God. Or like, let me read you a, a verse of encouragement or, you know, a verse of the Bible. You know, you don't hear a lot of, you don't see in Brooklyn, you know, and you can agree with me 100% on this. You don't see a lot of believers in Brooklyn unless you go to those places where believers are, like this place, other place and everything else. If you say somebody you're a believer, you believe in Jesus, you believe in God, they look at you like with this cynical, um, you know, approach like, oh, you believe in God? Oh, what, 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 you know, you, you're not living in the city? What, what's the matter? Like, they, they think of you like, like you have issues. Well, it's, it's supposed to be the other way around, all right? Because we have our own point of view, you know, right? And our own point of view is I'm being a Christian. They have their own point of view I'm being non a Christian. I'm being non a believer. All right? Everybody has their own point of view. And you can't say that my point of view is better than your point of view because that's your point of view. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you tell me, listen, this is my point of view, exactly. That's your point of view. You know, you are your own God. Right? Okay? So, you know, living in the city, there's a, 
like in those days, we don't hear about God a lot. And that's why it's so hard sometimes, you know, to, um, to like every day, to be close and to um, understand that there is God because the city doesn't provide glory too much for God, right? It gives you buildings. It gives you bridges. It gives you what men build and say, look, I have builders with me. You know, and stuff like, you know, like all these, you know, the Freedom Tower, you know, after, you know, all, all of these things, you know. But where is the, you know, I have built this because of the one who gave me breath to build this. You know what I'm saying? So we don't see that a lot. That's why I especially enjoy nature. Like I, I love going, you know, to see mountains or to see, um, you know, beautiful stuff. One of my favorite trips was going to uh, Alaska. With the, with the church, it was about like six, seven years ago, and like spending time with like Indians over there, they had like a conference, and like it was so amazing because Indians, they, were, they had this thing also connection with the land and the spirit, and a lot of Indians had this uh, had this crazy thing where they had like revelations of like the white man coming in with the cross on their back, you know, and like and a lot of you know Indians are like uh, found out this like the first time. Uh, like back in that conference, like a lot of Indians are actually believers in Jesus. So they believe in God, you know, and they believe in the Spirit, but and their Spirit is actually the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? But it is is crazy, you know, and uh, it was, you know, and just the connection that they have with the land and the, you know, and nature and everything else and the and the and the animals, it's it 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 was amazing, you know, and, and there was this one story too, where this or the head. The head of the Indian tribe, um, <laughs> he uh, there was like the whole like from the church about 20 people came. We had the pastor Yuli, you know, uh, the head pastor, the the worship team, the dancing team, like 20 people coming for a conference and everything else. And gave and they had they had the uh, of the tribe. What, what are they called? Chief. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so this chief, and you can see like you know the guy has like when he comes in, he uh, he carries respect with him. You know, there's people on him and everything else. So like he 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 um, he straightens everybody in the line. And goes like, listen, all right. I wanna I wanna uh, dance uh, a song for you that uh, my father danced for our uh, young uh, people when they went off to the World War Two to fight the Nazi. Actually, I was like, wow, he was actually fought also with the Nazi and every you know and everything else. And, and like everybody's standing over there, you know, like, okay, and they're like, okay, okay, <laughs> you know, and stuff. And this chief, he, uh, you know, and this chief, he starts like really bad, like Indian stuff. <laughs> and like for like 20 minutes, like just like, you know, it goes like, and this is actually a dance of um, like, you know, a warrior dance. You're going into war and you pre prepare your heart to go into war, you know, and it was like a prophetic uh, uh Prophetic dance. So if you have an opportunity, if you have an opportunity, as they, you know, to go with the pastor somewhere, to go to the conference, to go anywhere, it's amazing. You know, you get so many different revelations. Imagine if you would say, like the Russian song, come out. I would be here. Bugging out. It's crazy. And actually, the guy was saying that this uh, this chief, he was saying that he was reading the Bible and he, you know, he believes in the God of Israel. And like, really like yeah. Israel team type of stuff, it's, you know? It's crazy. It's yeah. Very pro Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so, so we were um, that the word of God was rare, right, in those days. And there were not too many visions because if the word of God is missing, you don't see too many visions. There's not a lot of dreams, there's not a lot about revelations, right? So, one night. Eli, Eli is the teacher, right? So Eli is the teacher and Samuel is the student, right? So one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. So the lamp of God, verse 3, had not yet gone, had not yet gone out, and Samuel, the student, right, was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The ark of God is where the Ten Commandments, the you know, a couple of holy um, things of Aaron and Moses. And verse number four. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel is the student, right? Samuel is like us. You know, he's, 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 he's in the house of God. He wants to get to know God. You know, but he does. And the Bible said, then the Lord called to Samuel. Samuel answered. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. Verse number five. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. 
So he went and he lay down. Again, the Lord said, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli, Eli his teacher, and said, Here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Verse number seven. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been, been revealed to him. So Samuel, he doesn't know God, right? Some of us, we're trying to understand God's voice clearly. Some of us, God is speaking to our hearts, and we're like, mm, I don't know, is he God, is he not? And that's why we extremely, we need somebody who knows God already, like a pastor, like a church, like all the brothers who can, you know, really tell you if it's from God or if it's your own crazy thinking, you know? So verse number eight. So Samuel is listening to this voice, but he doesn't know, right? And verse number eight. The third time, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized, the teacher, then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as the other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak. For your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. So, tingle, so it's going to be something interesting. At that time, I will carry out against Eli. Eli is who? He's Samuel's teacher, teacher, right? So, Eli, everything I spoke about his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemy God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened up the doors of the house of the Lord, and he was afraid to tell Eli the vision. All right, so let us stop over here because we read a lot of verse. So what's happening? Samuel's a student, right? Samuel, he wants to get to know God. And he hears the word of God, right? But he doesn't recognize. And he goes to his teacher, Eli. Eli's like, listen, all right, buddy, you go down, you, you know, you go to that place, you lie down. When God is going to speak to you, uh, that, that's God who's speaking with you, right? And, the, and God tells Samuel, the student of that teacher, that your teacher, Eli, have done bad things. His son, his sons have done bad things. Actually, the Bible speaks about the sons, right? The Bible speaks about the sons because the sons were priests, right? And the sons, what they did was, back in those days, people uh, brought uh, burnt offerings. And what the sons did, they actually said, listen, let us get the best part of the meat, all right? That's one of the sins that they committed. Another sin is that, uh, in that in that temple, they actually slept with women at the entrance, all right? Priests, you know? So the sons of the sons of uh, Eli, you know, a prophet, a teacher, they do some, you know crazy stuff, you know. And God is is coming into Samuel to tell his teacher that. And the Bible says that Samuel laid down until morning and opened up the door. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, his teacher, you know, to rebuke him, to tell him, listen, that God says that uh, I will judge you. And this is what happens next, all right? Verse six, sixteen. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely. If you hide from me anything, excuse me, he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he was let none, and he let none of Samuel's words fall on the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh. Shiloh is actually the city in Israel. You can actually visit Israel. You can see the archaeological uh, city of, of Shiloh. It's crazy. You know, the more archaeology they find out, the more they prove the Bible that, you know, all the stories and everything actually happened, you know, like we need faith, like, like, like we need those stories to actually believe in God, you know, but anyway, that's not here or there. When I appeared to Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word, all right? So, you know, we can see, and I'm going to end in two minutes, 
because I'm, I'm going over the board a bit because I wanted to, to <laughs> a little bit more, yeah, okay. Um, because I'm already starting to sweat a bit. It's a sign. Are you guys receiving something to tonight or not? Yeah. All right. Am I not like being just, you know, words in the air or not? No, it's good. All right. God is good. One of the lessons that we need to learn in this story, in particular story, and because there's so much after that is said about Samuel. <laughs> you know, I love this kid. You know, this kid, he got into a fight with his mother tonight because she didn't want him to come to the youth. Oh. <laughs> can, can, can I say that? Or no? Can I just? Amazing. Like, he, like, he goes. Is it okay? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. And then it's you, right? The mom was like, listen, why need to come to youth and stuff? You know? Like, it's amazing. Like, go to the club. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> you're That's young. Yeah. You're 14. You need to make a fake ID. <laughs> no, but it, I, I mean, you're my hero. Tonight, bro, you are my hero. Seriously. You know? I mean, stepping up to your mother like, oh, and, she, and she threatened you to ground you for a week too, right? She threatened the boy ground her for a week. <laughs> I could not live without a TV for a week. <laughs> That's good, man. Props. That's good. So, um, you know, one of the lessons, and then we can learn and go forward about Samuel, because Samuel has so many different lessons, you know, and he was, actually Samuel was the prophet who ordained the first king, right, Saul, and then he ordained who? David, right? So he was a powerful man. Actually, they, you know, Samuel, the Bible in different verses, they compare him to Moses. You don't hear a lot of prophets comparing Samuel to Moses, you know, and, and, uh, and one of the lessons that we need to learn as, as young people and as an older people too, and I'm gonna go on and like finish it in a couple of minutes, is that the more closer you get to God, the less fear you have of other people. Amen. 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 So, and the more closer you get to know God, the clearer that your purpose um, reveals in your life, right? Uh, some of you, right, don't know your purpose yet in life, because you're not close with God yet. Right? Some of you still live in sin because you're not close with God yet. Because when you get close with God, sin leaves. Right? So we need to understand God. Right? And I'm saying this not, not to be like, man, you're living in sin and stuff. No, because God cares and he, he cares about you too much that he doesn't want to... Um, so for you to be in that place, right? The Bible says that God, Jesus, gave us what? Life and life what? Abundantly. abundantly. Amen. What kind of abundant life do we live if we don't have a purpose when we come to God, right? right? Life without purpose is a life what? Wasted, right? This youth, no matter what the attacks have been, no matter what the situations have been, you know, we have a higher calling inside of our lives, you know? This place has a calling for each of us, right? And who will make a difference? I, right? Say, I will make a difference. Yeah. yeah. I will be in the ministry. I will be in the ministry. Yeah. And whatever that ministry is, right? You know, I believe 100%. The Bible says that first seek God, right? And his kingdom. And everything else will be added on to you, right? You know, we talk about, we talk a lot about, you know, following Jesus, right? What it is to follow Jesus, right? And I think, you know, in this place, it can go really big, really, big, really big, not for somebody's ego, oh, maybe so big because of this certain person and this certain person is because that we, each of us decide to go after God, right? It was said last week, I believe, and, and as I said, everybody's like, amen, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, people actually, you know, know the significance of that statement? Jesus said what? If you want to follow me, you must do what? Deny yourself. Deny yourself, right? And what else? Exactly. Pick up the cross, right? So you must deny yourself, pick up the cross, right? What is the cross? Is it a wooden cross? What type of cross? The burdens of this life, the persecution, the trials, tribulations of 
what happens once we get away from the dark. Okay. That's close. That's good. Our cross, because you're gonna you're gonna be looking, you know, you're gonna be looking really weird walking around with a wooden cross on the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people have a diamond cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you put it just yeah. <laughs> Saturday night live. Yeah, yeah, I love this brother. Yeah. 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 It's late and foolish. The Bible says that our crosses, right, and and different people have different crosses. They want to be gangster. They want to be like, you know, these huge crosses, the diamond crosses, like they tattoo the crosses, upside down crosses, whatever cross that there is, you know. Some people, you know, cru- uh, tattoo the, uh, the verse of the Bible, you know, and all this different stuff, whatever it is. The cross, the Bible says, right, it's God's will, right, and our will, right. So, like Jesus said, in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Not my will, but your will be, be done, right? I will not live for myself. I will live for God. I will not live for, you, for my own glory. I will live for God's glory. That's the cross. You know what I'm saying? It's not making your own decision that will satisfy your own flesh, your own, you know, your own self. You know, oh, I'm going to do this. But see, but then when you come to God, God is saying, no, don't do it. And you're like, nah. I don't want, you know, but I really want it. I want this stuff. And whatever that stuff is in your head, you want that, that stuff. You know, whatever that stuff is connecting you, like, I want it. I need it. You know, it's mine. And God says, no, no, no. My way, right? It, Jesus said, what? I am the what? I am the way, right? He says, he is the way, right? When we come to that cross, to that intersection, see, that's where truly reveals your Christian character. Not, 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 not the preaching, <laughs> You know, I, I think, you know, anybody, not anybody, but I think a lot of people can, can stand here and talk, right? But don't see it as an example. It's like, oh, I need to be like that who preaches, right? The Bible says that we need to look upon who? It's Jesus, right? And I'm, I'm telling you, your personal walk with God begins where? At home, right? Mm-hmm. Begins on the street, right? When you choose that right decision, right? And you have to have somebody to help you that too. I cannot emphasize enough of having all the brothers, all the sisters, a pastor in your life, all right, who will talk the word of God into your life, all right? Without the accountability, without a person telling you something in your life, you're an orphan. There's so many Christians that live on the street and say, yeah, I'm a Christian. I read the Bible and everything else. Who's your pastor? Who's your leader? What's the last time you've been in church? What's the last time you worshiped God? You know, so we need to realize that as a Christian, we belong in a family and not to say, man, you controlling us. We need, I need to do my own thing. I need to do my, 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 you know, I need to be free. Okay. Your freedom will get you into trouble. As we said at at the beginning of the evening, meet all the people with regrets, right? The biggest liberty, the best liberty we can have is being a slave to God. That's an oxymoron, right? You know that verse, you know that, uh, the different, it's an oxymoron, right? But a slave to God is a freedom, actually, in real life, right? You know, and I want to believe that myself because I want to be completely free in God. You know, completely lacking no fear, right? And um, um, just just to end it, you know, and end with a prayer is, um, you know, the Bible says that if He's not Lord of all, not not you know, a couple of verses there, but um, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all, right? So if you accepted God into your heart, right? Jesus said that, listen, I come and I knock, right? And he's, you know, for you to open up the, the door, right? And um, when you open up that door, right? Jesus comes, comes in and you meet him and you're like, wow, you know, you're living with God. But there's certain things in your life that you're not ready to let go, all right? And we need to let go of, the, of these things to go further, to understand them even more, and to be um, and to be on key with God, you know, and to be like Samuel, not being afraid of anything. You know, Samuel, after he told his teacher that he will, um, that his uh, family will be judged, and later what happened? The sons, they get killed by Philistines. He hears about it, falls off a chair, breaks his neck, 
he kills, he, 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 he dies in himself. And Samuel, he goes on forward, you know, standing up, you know, being courageous and standing up to the people that he was leading, right? Then he, then he was courageous, standing up to Saul, a king that he actually ordained, but, you know, standing up. Because Saul, he could have killed him in a second. But still, why? Because he had that intimacy with God. He had that connection with God, you know? The Bible says that we must throw away everything what is holding us, you know? Especially that, you know, that sin, right? Right, the Bible says? Sentence. That easily entangles, us. besets us, entangles us, right? You know, there's certain, everybody, everybody has that sin, that certain something that pulls you back in, you know? That, 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 that takes you away from your calling, you know? What is that, you know? We must realize that letting go of that sin, there's bigger, there's better things in our life, you know? And we must let go of that sin. Not, not, not say, I must let go of that sin, I must let go of that sin, I must let go of this thing. You know, the more you repeat, the more you're like, man, I cannot get rid of this thing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the Bible says that easily that sin entangles us and all the things that we must remove. How? By focusing on who? On Jesus, right? It's not like I'm going to leave that stuff behind, but more like I'm going to go after God even more, even more hardcore, you know? Every Friday to, uh, to you, every Thursday to, to church, Saturday church, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday Bible, you know, study, you know. We must be on fire. The Bible says that God answers those who are earnestly seeking him, right? He won't answer your calling if you're just going to be saying, God, listen, I need, I need for you to answer it in my life, right? The Bible says what? In Romans, I got to finish up, man. Like, I'm preaching too long, man. I don't want to preach too long. Um... The Bible says Romans 1 2, right? The Bible, the, Paul said it to, to back in those days as, as believers wanted to get to know God a lot more. And it still echoes right now. Paul is saying what? And we can turn to it. You know, I love that. Paul, uh, Romans 12 1. And we'll finish up here. Romans 12, 1. These are the last two verses. Let me pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good, right? He is. He's amazing. He's amazing. The Bible's. <laughs> oh, your King James. <laughs> oh. The best one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, verse 1 and 2 uh, Paul is saying I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God in other version it says I plead I urge you you know I urge you right that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and then it says do not be conformed to the pattern of this world right but be transformed by the renewing of your mind right and then you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect, you know, the, the will of God, right? So the Bible says, like in Samuel, right, what, what we read about Samuel, you know, is that what Samuel did was he presented his body. He presented his, um, he was in that temple. He was trying to understand God, right? And for us to understand God's will, we must offer up our body as a living sacrifice, Right? When we offer up our, God, our body as a living sacrifice, meaning that you don't need to, you know, understand this. You don't need to burn yourself, you know, your body. It's a sacrifice for you, God. Sa bur you know, sacrifice, meaning that, you know, here I am, God. You know, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand my life. I don't understand this. But I'm going to be in that place for you, God, to speak into my heart, you know. And I, I must go forward when you speak that into my heart. And I will not be afraid because you're speaking into my heart, you know? So my my wish for you is not to stop tonight, is not to is not to say, listen, you know, uh, you know, this guy man, he was talking too long, he was you know, he was screaming a lot, he was like, you know, making me feel I don't know if I made you feel uncomfortable or weird or if I was like, you know, but 
you know, um, I just had a lot of things like I was praying about for this past week, and you know, I haven't been here for years and years. So like you want to get everything across, and you want to get, you know, get all of your thoughts across as well, you know. But you know, we must understand God. We must understand what the higher calling He has for inside of our lives, you know. Um, because if you don't understand that, then what's the <laughs> why are we living, right? You know, why are we living? You know. And that's my wish to you is to understand God's will for your lives. All right. His will is perfect. It's pleasing. The Bible says it's perfect. You know, how? where are you going to find out uh, a calling, <laughs> a purpose that is perfect? Nowhere. All right. And, you know, you, you get so much information out there. You got Internet. You got school. You got jobs. You got people. You got all this different information. But nobody can, can really tell you. Who are you in life? What is your purpose in life? One book tells you what it is, right? So instead of instead of saying, you know, instead of saying, listen, um, I have done Christian, you know, I have done this and this, I have done a couple of things, and now I'm going to do my own thing. Maybe you haven't truly understood God in all His glory for you to give yourself completely to Him. The people who left God is because they tasted. Because they smell the bit of his fragrance. But have they truly bit, you know, as a, as, a, as a beautiful, like, you know, I love steak. You know, when you taste it, you love me, like, it's amazing. Like, you know, but a person who doesn't know, he just walks by, he sees a bit of smell, and he, and he goes forward. That's how some people would got it, you know. They see it a little bit. They, they, they somehow, you know, peek their heads inside, and then they leave, go on their merry way, right? And kind of like, and, it, and it's some of, you know, to, to me, for, for some time, it was really hard to see that, you know, for people coming in and leaving, you know, and, um, and, not, and, not, <laughs> and not serving him and not loving him and not like really, you know, and just going on, on the ways. But then God is also working with our hearts and he's also working my, with my heart for years and years and years, you know. And in some ways, I became, I don't want to talk about the cool spirit, you know, like, you know, sometimes you care about people too much, and you care about those people who actually don't care about you, <laughs> you know. And, but you can connect with God on that level too, because Jesus cared for his disciples while they all ran away, right? And he understands betrayal, right? He, has, he understands every situation inside of our lives. <laughs> I love my daughter. She goes, you know, by her face. <laughs> She's like, you've been preaching too long. <laughs> I'm not going to tell all your secrets. So, um, if you just get up for a second, we could, we're just going to pray right now, right? And we're going to pray. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, what we were talking about, we're talking about Samuel, right? And the more we connect with God, the more we listen to God's word, um, the more we understand God's purpose. Right? And the Bible says in the end that we ended the whole sermon is that we must offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, right? We urge, Paul was urging at that time the believers, and he's urging us, right? You know, and I believe 100% that God wants to do something special in this youth. But, you know, through, through different situations, through different circumstances, you know, it has been like a rock maybe road, but there's so many people here. It's amazing to me to see so many people, you know? And the Bible says that, listen, the Bible says that whatever situations happen with other people, it's not other people's fault. The Bible says that the devil is the father of all lives, right? The more we understand God, the more we understand his word, the more we understand the world, right? <coughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. As is as already preparing. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to share something. Yeah, yeah. Before you pray, just... Yeah. just. Two, two minutes. Please. I gotta put it in my phone. Please, I'm please, sorry. Please. I gotta put it. But it's something. Because you always do it. Whenever we help Bible studies, like I say something, it goes like, okay, listen. I gotta put in a couple of cents. No, but, but really, like, it just occurred to me, you know, it's a wonderful thing, really. Yeah. You know, because the, 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 you're talking about Samuel, and, and uh, it really re it really parallels with the time in which we live today. Why? Because uh, uh, Samuel did this one thing. He. Uh, sort of prepared the way for King David to come, for the, for the King of Israel to come. 
In that uh, way, we can identify with him because we are a corporate Samuel, right, that is preparing the way for the King, Messiah, Jesus Christ to come. We sing, King of glory, King of glory, come in. Who is that King of glory? The Lord Jesus is the King of glory, and his coming is approaching. So we are sort of speak is a corporate Samuel, right? Mm -hmm. That is making and preparing the way for the Lord. So the story of Samuel, it really, really speaks to our lives today. It speaks prophetically to us. And especially as a young people, we can identify with him very much. And in the time of gloom and darkness and, and a really, uh, you know, spiritual deficit, the mm -hmm. deficit of the word of God, today there's a lot of uh, junk food, spiritual junk food that is available. I mean, you can go to the Barnes and Nobles, you can go to any bookstore, you see shelves that are filled with information, but not much of this information is really good, and not much of it carries good uh, nutrition, for, you know, food for thought and food for spirit and soul, right? Yeah. I mean, much of it is really poison, I'll tell you. Not Even, kosher. Not, not kosher. kosher. Not kosher. Even, even you know, even even the even the food that has a Christian label on it, it's not you know. So the word of God, talk about the word of the right. Lord, is rare in our day. Even though it's much of it from the first look of it, because you you know, radio, broadcast, internet. We you know, right now there is a camera rolling, so it, it's sort of like streaming. It goes out. However, uh, the the true word there is a deficit, like in the time of Samuel. There is a lot of, I saw the dream, I heard the voice, but in the reality, how well does that, uh, uh, you know, relate to, to truth is a big question. People, they want to give their own opinions and say, that says the Lord. However, the Lord didn't speak, you know, we see the increase of these things in our time, very much like it was with Samuel. Samuel observed these things. You know, priest sleeping with girls. Today, if a priest sleeps with a girl, that's not even that bad anymore, as long as he's not touching the boys. You know, I mean, uh, in reality, that's what we see. You know, people ordain, you know, those people to be ministers. It's not just hidden, it's condoned. It's, it's so they open people, you know, teach us the word of God. It doesn't matter your sexual orientation. Really doesn't matter. It's your business, what you're doing, your bad. Just give us, you know, whatever you want to give us. That, that's about it. That's the time we should. So it resembles much. But this is what Samuel did. In spite of it all, he stood strong. He, and I love the way it goes. The third chapter goes like this. First, the Lord calls to Samuel. Samuel cannot recognize the voice of God. Then he recognizes the voice of God. And then the Lord begins to talk to Samuel. But afterwards, this is the way it finishes, that third chapter. And I, it just occurred to me. In 319, mm -hmm. this is what it says. It says that for the Lord, I'm sorry, 321, for the Lord revealed himself mm -hmm. to Samuel. You see what I mean? So now what happens? If I hear the Lord, the word of the Lord, then I'm able to discern his word. And if I'm remaining obedient to what he's teaching me, to the word that he's sharing with me, right. sooner or later, God himself will reveal. Yeah. Imagine that. That is the pattern. That is sort of the progression there. And that is beautiful. Imagine it was first just the sound and then the Lord himself yeah. revealed himself to, to Samuel. And, and I'll tell you that, uh, you know, he started out as a young individual. As a boy, as a really young yeah. of age, right? And uh, I'll tell you that for us as youth, the book of Proverbs, it says like this. Train up a child, 22.6, Proverbs. Train up a child in the way he or she should go. And when he or she is old, he or she will not depart from it. This is what I'm trying to say. By us being here and continue to be here, there is a good chance. It's not for sure, but there's a lot of things that we need to face down the line. But it's a good chance that we just might make it like, like Samuel. There's a good chance. There's a good chance. You see? So what happened is that he started as a boy, but then he progressed and continued. The Bible says that not one word fell yeah. to the ground from the lips of Samuel. He became the great prophet, not just to a tiny group, to the entire nation of his day. And everybody from one border of Israel to another knew Samuel. Because he represented his God. And God allowed for him to get to that specific 
position. Amen. That's all I wanted to share, just to add to that. Why don't you pray? How would you please? Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Uh, hallelujah. You know, if you want, you can stand. If you want, you can sit if you want. You know, I just want right now for us to pray, to spend these couple of minutes with God, all right? For God to reveal himself inside of our hearts, all right? But it's not late. It's, you know, it's not really late. So we can still, we can still um, come to him. God, we thank you so much, God. Thank you so much, God, that you loved us before we loved you, God. Thank you so much for sending your son for our lives, God. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your lessons, God. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We want to get to know you, God, a lot more, God. We want to connect with you, God, in a much deeper level, God. We want to find that connection, God, that nothing will break it, God. Hallelujah, God. We want our lives to be grounded upon that rock. Upon, upon, upon that rock that, that, that even though when storms come, God, we are grounded on that rock. Hallelujah, God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love, God. Thank you so much for this Friday, God. Thank you for our lives, God. Thank you for your revelations, God. Thank you that we are alive right now. Thank you that we're not, you know, we don't have this health issues. But if we do have health issues, God, you have, you've given us, you know, the purpose, the, your word of God to stand upon. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you so much, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we're just welcoming, we're just welcoming, God, your revelation inside of our hearts, God. Hallelujah, God. Teach us, God. We want to offer up our bodies, God, as a living sacrifice. All this week, God. The next day, God. Tomorrow, God. Teach us, God, your will, God. We want to understand that perfect will, God, in this world, God. In this world, that, that nothing makes sense. We want for you to make sense inside of our lives, God. You are the way, God. We want to follow that way, God. We want to pick up that cross, God. We want to pick up that cross and say it is your will for our lives, not our will, God. Because your will is perfect, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Make this youth, God. Make this place, God, a glory for your name, God. Hallelujah. Let us worship you, God, in spirit and in truth, God. Let us not be ashamed, God, but in power, God, worshiping your holy name, God. Hallelujah, God. Let our mouth, God. Hallelujah. Let our mouth, God, rejoice, God, when we come to this place, God. Let us not be ashamed, God. Whatever sin, God, we have suffered through, whatever sin, God, we have went through this past week or this past month, God, give us that revelation, God. Give us that revelation how we need to leave that sin behind, God. Whatever it is, God, because we have a higher calling, God. We are the soul. We are the light in this city, God. In Jesus' name, God. We are proclaiming, God, your, your healing, God. Hallelujah, God. Your healing inside of our lives, God. Inside of our hearts, God. Inside of our bodies, God. Let us be completely committed to you, God. Let us be completely committed to your word, God. To your presence, God. Let us be thirsty, God, for your word, God. Let us be hungry for your word, God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, God. Let our mouth, God, be connected with our hearts, God. Let us, let us not play the game of more than we actually are, God, coming into this place, God. But let us come to you with humility, God, and seek you, God. Because you, God, you oppose the proud, God, but you give grace to the humble, God. Thank you so much for your grace, God. Thank you for your gift. Thank you for your gift. That we have done nothing to deserve that. But you have given us this gift of love, God. This gift of grace, God. Thank you so much, God. I thank you so much for each person in this place, God. For every man, for every woman, for every boy, for every girl, God. I bless their beautiful hearts, God. I thank you so much that they're in this place, God. I thank you, God, that 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 if they're in this place, God, there's a special calling in their lives, too. It's not just by accident. It's not just that they walked in here, but there's a special calling inside of their lives, God. Hallelujah, God. And that calling, God, is to give glory to you, God. Whatever gift that they have, God, whatever gift that they have, let it be that gift to be used inside this youth, God. Hallelujah. Whatever that gift may be, God, greeting or servicing or worship, God. Or worship, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Or worship, God. I long, God. I long when I come into this place, God, to worship your holy name, God. Not because you deserve it, God, but, but because I need it, God. 
because I need to worship you, God, so yes. much, God. And you and you're such a and you're such a big God. You're such an enormous God. You got you created the heavens and the earth. You know the stars by name, God. You know our names by name, God. You know our name. You know each of our names, God. Thank you so much, God. And it's, and and coming into this place, God, on Friday, God. Let it be a breakthrough, God. Let it be a breakthrough in Jesus' name, God. So there's a worship team here, God, and we don't worship you like oh halfway, God, or like you know our voices is like a little bit low, a little bit high. Well, I'm afraid to worship God, but let us come to you, God, as your children, God, being thankful, God, for your grace, God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, God. I just bless this place, God. We bless our place, God. You know, your word says, whatever we step, wherever we step, you are there also, God. And we are here, God. We are stepping, God. This is our ground. This is our place, God. We need to worship you, God, in truth and in spirit, God. Let us not just come and play with you, God, and, 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 and play this game, God, but be 100% committed to you, God. A hundred percent committed to you, God. Hallelujah, God. In you we have happiness. In you we have direction. In you we have a purpose. In you we have strength. In you we have power, God. Hallelujah, God. Let us fall in love with prayer, God. Let us thirst for prayer, God. Hallelujah, God. Whatever is holding us inside of our hearts, God, let it be burned away. Whatever the world inside of our hearts, whatever the love for the world, let it be burned away in Jesus' name, God. We need more of you and less of the world, God. We need more of your glory, God, and less of and less of the world's crap, God. Hallelujah. We need more of your holiness, God. We need more of your radical faith, God, inside of our lives, God, than, than, than this world, God. There's nothing in this world, God, that can offer us, that can be compared to your unfailing love. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this place. Hallelujah, God. Speak to our hearts. Make yourself known to us like you did to Samuel. Hallelujah. We'll make your word be evident inside of our lives, God, through the transformation, God, of our lives, God. We are a new creation in you, God. We are a new creation in you, God. The old has passed away, God. Let us understand this, God. Let us be born again, truly be born again, once and for all, God, and just go forward, God, 100% committed to you, God. And whatever the trials and tribulations we may face, with you, God, there is always an answer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.